Hi guys, I am so pumped to show you how to knit this top down v-neck raglan cardigan. Um, it's so cozy, it's a classic look, it's a pretty quick knit. Um, it's one of my favorites. I love the buttons. These are um, one inch wood buttons that are just so fun. But overall, um, I just wanna walk you through exactly how to make this and give you kind of the foundational knowledge um, to construct a sweater like this. There is a written pattern, so click the link in the description and it'll take you to my website where you can download a free PDF of the pattern. Um, but please use this video as a reference for exactly how, how to make this sweater. Um, and please, if you enjoy this video, if it helps you, create something that you love to wear, please like the video, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button so you get alerted every time I upload one of these great tutorials. It just helps other knitters find my videos, so I would really appreciate it. But anyway, let's get started knitting the sweater. To make this sweater, you're gonna need three to four skeins of Lion Brand Respun Thick and Quick Yarn. It's 100% recycled polyester yarn. It is considered a super bulky weight yarn, but however, um, it is not the thickest super bulky weight yarn um, I've worked with before. It's a little thinner, I would say, than uh, Woolies Thick and Quick, regular Thick and Quick yarn. Um, but just note that this is a pretty large skein. It has, um, it's 12 ounces, 340 grams, 223 yards, 204 meters. So it is a large skein of yarn. You will need four regular stitch markers, or you can use a piece of yarn. You will need four removable stitch markers, or you can use a piece of scrap yarn um, that you can remove. You will need a tapestry needle. You will need a pair of scissors. You will need a tape measure to measure the length from the body and to measure arm length. You will need four one inch buttons. And then last but not least, the needles. We are using nine millimeter needles. These are US 13 needles. Uh, you only need two sizes. You will only need the 16 inch circular needle to complete the, um, to complete the arms. We're gonna knit the arms in the round. And then because we're knitting a cardigan flat back and forth, um, you're just going to need a long um, circular needle. This is a 40 inch circular needle. Um, you won't have to change lengths as the sweater grows because again, we're just going to be knitting back and forth. So that's what you will need to knit the sweater. All right, I am going to cast on 32 stitches using the long tail cast on method. I'm just gonna wrap the yarn around about 10 times to figure out how much yarn I need to cast on for about 10 stitches. plus a little bit more. All right, we're gonna make a slip knot now and get ready to cast on the rest of our stitches. Okay, so we've got our first stitch cast on with our slip knot. Make sure it's not too tight. And we're gonna cast on the rest of our stitches by grabbing the yarn. And you're gonna wanna hold the yarn like this around your thumb, around your index finger, you're going to grab the yarn and go under the yarn, around your thumb, over the yarn, around your index finger, and pull the yarn through. That's two stitches. Under, over, pull through. That's three stitches, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then you continue to 32 stitches. All right, so I've got my 32 stitches on. This is the right side of the work. We're gonna be working back and forth because this is a cardigan. And now we're gonna set up for our raglan shaping by placing the stitch markers in certain spots as we go. And because this is a V-neck, the left front and the right front, we'll just start with one stitch. And I'll show you what we mean here. So we are just going to purl one. And this one stitch will grow to become the left front. 
I'm sorry, the right front. Um, and then you're going to place your stitch marker. Now we are going to purl across six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six. You're going to place another marker and this is going to grow to become the right sleeve. Now we're going to purl across 18 stitches for the back. One, two, three, four, five, six, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. We're going to place another stitch marker. So that was the back, and now we're going to knit across the other sleeve. One, two, three, four, five, six. Place another stitch marker, and then we're going to purl one. Okay, so now we've set up for our raglan shaping. So as you look at it, the sweater will grow. So this, this first stitch will grow to be the right front. These six stitches over here will grow to be the, the um, right sleeve. These stitches will grow to become the back. These stitches over here will grow to become the left sleeve. And this one stitch in the front will grow to become the left front. So now we're going to complete our first raglan increase row and we're going to do this by knitting one. We are going to do what we call a left leaning increase by picking up not this stitch that we just knit but the first stitch below that. Okay. Insert the needle from the back to the front there and then we're just going to knit through that first stitch. So now we've increased a stitch. Now we're going to slip the marker and now we're just going to pull up the bar on the stitch immediately below and you just insert your needle from front to back there and you're going to knit through and pull up there. Then you're now also going to knit the original stitch. So now we've just increased two stitches. We will be increasing two stitches on either side of each marker. So each raglan increase row, we will increase eight stitches. Okay, now you're going to knit all the way to the next marker. And you're going to do that left leaning increase. Here's that first stitch. You want to go underneath from back to front that stitch below what you just knit and you're going to knit through that stitch. So we've increased one there. You're going to slip the marker and now it's a little wonky because this is our very first cast. This is our setup row here, but you're going to pull up that bar from the stitch below and knit through that. Knit the original stitch knit across to the next marker. We're going to increase. Just knit, finish knitting across the back. Slip the marker. Increase. This is a right lifted increase. knit across that other sleeve to the next marker and now you do that left leaning increase slip the marker and we're going to do that right lifted increase you got to really make sure you get through the full stitch all right. 
and then you knit the last stitch. We've completed our first raglan increase round or row. We've increased eight stitches from our original 32 that we cast on. So now we have two stitches for each front. We've increased to eight stitches for each sleeve and now we're at 20 stitches for the back because we increased um, one stitch for each front, two stitches for each sleeve, and two stitches for the back. And now we're going to turn our work and we're simply going to purl all the way across here. So you are going to purl across the entire row, making sure you purl those stitches we've just added. and you just keep slipping the markers as you go. All right, so now we're gonna do our next raglan increase row. So we are gonna start by knitting one, knitting the next stitch, and now we're gonna do that left lifted increase Slip the marker, but don't lose the marker. And now we're gonna do that right lifted increase by inserting the needle under the stitch just below the needle and then knitting the next stitch. Knit to the next marker. Left and in, lifted increase, slip the marker, right lifted increase. Knit to the next marker. Left lifted increase. Slip the marker, right lifted increase. Sometimes you have to make sure you lift it correctly. Knit to the next marker. Right lifted increase. I'm sorry, that's a left lifted increase. Slip marker, right lifted increase. And knit to the end. And now you're just going to turn the work and purl back. All right, so we have completed one, two, three, four, five rows. We've completed two raglan increase rows. And um, now we need to increase a stitch for our V-neck and do raglan increases. So we are going to increase for that V-neck every other raglan row now. So we are going to knit one 
And then we're going to make a stitch that leans to the left by inserting the needle from front to back in that bar and knitting it through the back. And so now we have a stitch that leans to the left. Now we're gonna continue doing our increase rounds just as we would before with the left lifted increase, slipping the marker followed by the right lifted increase. And we're gonna repeat that. I'm gonna redo that because that is not working out well. And then once we get all the way to the end, since we did a left leaning increase here, we're gonna do a right, um, a make one that leans to the right over here. So we're doing a, um, a stitch that leans to the left here and then a stitch that leans to the right here. So continue this row all the way to one stitch before the end, working raglan increases as you go. And I'm nearing the end of this raglan increase row. I'm gonna do my left lifted increase, slip the marker, followed by the right lifted increase. And then I'm going to knit to one stitch before the end. And we made a, um, a make one left on the other side. Now we're gonna make one that leans to the right. And to do that, you insert your left needle from back to front and knit it through the front. And then you will just knit that last stitch. So, now we've increased for that v-neck on the fronts of both sides and we've made increases that kind of mirror each other in the front so you turn the work and you're just going to purl all of the way back slipping the markers as you go all right so I'm at the end of the pearl, round, pearl row. And um, now since we just made a raglan, um, we just made an increase at the beginning of the last raglan row, we are not going to do that on this one. So this is just a regular raglan increase row without increasing at the beginning of the row for the v-neck so just complete a regular raglan increase row and if you're having problems lifting the stitch from with the right hand needle you can always kind of prop it up with this other needle and knit through it that way so i'm finishing this raglan row that did not have the v-neck increase and then purl back. And then when we start the next raglan increase row, we will do an increase for that v-neck. All right, so now it's time to do another v-neck increase on the front of the sweater. So we did two raglan increase rows. Um, and then on the third raglan increase, we did a v-neck increase. On the fourth raglan increase, we just did a normal row. And now on the fifth raglan increase, we're going to do the V-neck again. So every other raglan increase from here on out um, until it's time to stop, we will do that increase for the V-neck. So just as a reminder, that's knit one. And then we're going to make one that leans to the left by inserting the needle from front to back and then knitting through the back. And then you just continue a, regu a regular raglan increase until you get to one stitch before the end. 
I'm nearing the end of this raglan increase row where we need to do an increase for the v-neck. Now I need to make one that leans to the right. So I am going to insert my needle from back to the front and knit through the front and then knit this last stitch. All right, so for reference now, we've made five raglan increase rows with two increases for the v-neck. So if we started with six stitches on each sleeve, if we've made five raglan increases, we should have 10, we should have 10 more stitches on each sleeve and on the back. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28. So that's correct because I started with 18 stitches and now I have 28. And then if I started with six stitches for each sleeve, I should have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16 stitches for each sleeve. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. And then for the fronts, we started with one stitch, we added five for the raglan increases, and then we have two extra for the V-neck increases. So that's two, four, six, eight. So now you are gonna continue on in this fashion, adding a V-neck increase every other raglan row. I am going to continue on until I have 48 stitches on the back. So if I have 28 stitches now and I'm trying to get to 48, I need to do 10 more raglan increase rows. So you continue on until the number of, until you reach the number of stitches you're supposed to have or that you want to have for the back. I just wanted to take a second. Sometimes it can be hard to remember if you are on an in a raglan increase row where you need to increase for the v-neck. So I wanted to show you how to kind of look at the work and tell if you need to do a regular increase raglan increase row or a v-neck raglan increase row. So I'm on the right side of the work. I'm going to do a raglan increase row, but I can't remember if I added a stitch, my previous raglan increase row or not. So the, the last stitch on um, the last row would be my purl row. And if I look down, I can tell that I added a stitch right before that purl row. Um, and you can tell there's like a little bit of, um, there's like a little notch that you can see right here, right here, and right here. So I do not need to make a rag a v neck increase because I just made one the row previous from that purl row. So this this stitch here is from the purl row, and then you can tell there's like that little notch right there from adding that v-neck increase and you can tell i've overall i've done one two three v-neck increases and um i will just complete a regular increase row now all right and now since i just did um a regular raglan increase row i wanted to show you now how to tell it's time for you to add the v-neck so that little notch for that extra stitch is all the way down here so that was then the purl row then a regular raglan row then the, a purl row and then now it's time because you can see that it, it's pretty evenly spaced out here so now it's time to do a v-neck increase I am at the point where I have completed 15 raglan increase rows to get me to 48 stitches, which was the amount of stitches I am supposed to have on my back um, before I divide for the body. So if you're making the same size, that's how many stitches you should have. Um, you might have a different number based on what the size that you're making, but just for reference, I started with 18 stitches. I ended with 48, that's 30 stitches. So yes, that is 
15 raglan increase rows. I started with six stitches on either sleeve, plus 30 is third, I should have 36 stitches for each sleeve. And then I ended up with 23 stitches for each front. So I just finished my last raglan increase row. So I just finished on the right side of the work. You're gonna wanna turn the work and do one more purl row here. And then we will divide for the body when we are, are on the right side of the work. All right, so I just finished that purl row. We've got a lot of stitches on our needles. Now it's time to divide for the body. So we are going to be um, knitting across the left front. We're going to take a piece of waist yarn and our tapestry needle and move the left stitches onto a piece of scrap yarn. We're gonna cast on stitches at the underarm and connect the front, the left front to the back. We're gonna knit across the back. Then we're gonna take our other piece of scrap yarn and our tapestry needle and move the right sleeve stitches off of the knitting needles onto a piece of waist yarn. And that will, I will cast on stitches with the underarm that will connect the back to the right front. So basically we are knitting across a row and removing the sleeve stitches. And that way we will connect the front of the cardigan to the back of the cardigan. So I suggest getting a piece of waist yarn um, that's probably about two and a half feet long or so. Basically you need to make sure you can accommodate all of the stitches comfortably that are on your sleeve plus some. So they sit on the waist yarn without falling off. So I am going to get my tapestry needle and my waist yarn ready. I'm just gonna set that aside here. So now we are on the right side of the work. We are starting with the left front. We are gonna knit across the left front to the first stitch marker. All right, so now I'm going to remove the stitch marker. I'm going to take my tapestry needle with the waist yarn and I'm gonna start removing all of these sleeve stitches and putting them on the piece of waist yarn. And all of these sleeve stitches are the stitches that are on our needle all the way to this next, next stitch marker. So just remove all the stitches until you get to the next stitch marker. And once you get to that next stitch marker, um, you can remove the marker, set it aside. Now just pull that tapestry needle through with your, your waist yarn and make sure those stitches sit nicely on that piece of scrap yarn. All right, so I'm gonna put the tapestry needle down and get my other piece of scrap yarn. We're gonna get this ready for the other set of sleeve stitches. And I'm just going to weave this through and set this aside. All right, so we have our left front over here. We've moved our sleeve stitches onto waist yarn and now we have our back. So we're gonna be connecting the left front and the back and we are gonna cast on some stitches at the underarm. I'm gonna cast on two stitches. Just cast on um, 
the number that you're supposed to. If you want to add or subtract, that's fine. Um, just know that when you change, when you add stitches at the underarm here, it changes the stitch count for the sleeves and also the body. And then you just continue to knit. So we cast on two stitches using the backwards loop method. I'll show you that one more time. I, I know I did that kind of fast. So you literally just twist the yarn backwards and put it on the needle. And basically you just need to make sure that this piece of yarn is on the inside of the loop because that allows you to knit into it. So that's two stitches cast on at the underarm. And then we're simply gonna just continue knitting across the back. So now we've connected the front and the back with stitches cast on at the underarm. Now, um, I did not place a stitch marker in the middle of um, I cast on stitches at the sleeve because we're not doing any body shaping. I'm not decreasing or increasing stitches um, for shaping for the body. So there really is no need to place a stitch marker there, but you might see that in other patterns. Um, if you decrease or increase stitches, um, you'll, you, you might do that around a marker sitting right at the underarm in the middle of the underarm cast on stitches. So just continue knitting across the back until you get to the next stitch marker. I've knit to the next marker. I'm gonna remove the marker. Now I'm going to place all of the right sleeve stitches onto the piece of waist yarn with the tapestry needle. So just move all of the stitches until you get to the next marker, which would be the right front. You're just gonna move all of these stitches onto the waist yarn like you did with the other sleeve. All right, same thing, remove the stitch marker, pull the yarn through, get those sleeves those right sleeve stitches situated on the piece of waist yarn and now we're going to cast on the same number of stitches we did at the underarm for the other sleeve so i'm going to cast on two stitches using the backwards loop method and these stitches that you cast on here will be a little looser um and I'll show you how to, to purl through them when you go through them, but just continue knitting as you would normally, even though that first stitch might look a little funny, but it all will even out. So you just knit to the end. And this is the right front. All right, so we have officially divided for the body, and this is when the sweater kind of starts looking like a sweater. The cardigan starts looking like a cardigan um, because now you have the sleeve stitches that are, and we're looking at it upside down here. Um, now you have these sleeve stitches that are separated from the body. So that's what dividing for the body means. So now you will continue purling on the wrong side and knitting on the right side of the work. You will continue stuck in that stitch um, until you get to about two inches um, before the total body length that you, that you want. So the ribbing at the bottom will add about two inches. So um, I did wanna show you, um, as you knit, as you purl across this first row after you've divided for the body. I just want to show you what it looks like to purl through those cast on stitches because it can be a little wonky. All right, I am purling. I am now at those two cast on stitches which look a little different. Just make sure you go in through the work so that the loop stays twisted there. Um, same way as you would purl normally, but these stitches do get a little stretched out. Um, again, just make sure you're inserting the needle normally there. 
they do get a little stretched out, um, but as you continue to work, it'll take shape a little bit more. And if you need to seam up armhole gaps at the end, you can do that. Um, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like to purl through those backward loop cast on stitches. So now you'll just purl to the end. All right, so you purl to the end. And now um, you're just gonna continue, like I said, you're gonna continue knitting stack and that stitch or purling on the wrong side and knitting on the right side of the work until you get to the length you're, you're supposed to get to or the length you want to get to from the underarm. I am going to knit about 10 inches from the underarm and then I will try it on and see how it's fitting. You can try it on sooner or later. Um, it's great because when you knit, um, cardigans it's a little easier to try it on because you don't have to get the sweater over your head um, but just know that the bottom ribbing will add two inches to your overall length from um, the cast on edge at the underarm so just keep that in mind when you're trying to decide how long to go on your cardigan I just wanted to show you how to join um, your next skein of yarn once you get towards the end of your first skein and um, here is what you do to join your next skein. So I simply just knit or purl about three or four stitches together at the same time. So I leave a little tail with the new yarn, I leave enough tail of the old yarn, and I just continue purling three or four stitches. And then I simply drop the old tail and continue knitting or purling with the new yarn. And then it'll be a double stitch um, for a few stitches, but you won't really be able to tell much. And then you just knit or purl back through those stitches as if they were one. And that is how you join. And then you can just snip the ends and they're kind of already woven in because you have knit the stitches together. So that's how that works. Now I've completed the body for about 10 inches and um, 10 inches from the underarm. You can complete it for as long or as short as you'd like. Again, just remember that the bottom ribbing adds about two inches. So now we are going to do a knit one, purl one, or one by one rib for the bottom ribbing. So all we are going to do is simply knit one and purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. So complete this all the way across. I'm nearing the end of my first row of one by one rib at the bottom. And then we're simply going to turn our work and just continue knit one, purl one, all the way back. Knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. So you're gonna continue this for a total of six rows. And then I will meet you back here and show you how to bind off. I just completed six rows, one, two, three, four, five, six of my one by one rib for the bottom. And now it is time to bind off. And I just wanna note, there are many different ways to bind off. This is kind of the most basic way. Um, some people don't like to bind off this way because it can be a little tight. Um, however, I like to try to bind off a little more loosely. I like the look of this and it's just simple, but there are other ways to bind off. I just want to, want to note that. But um, all we're gonna do is knit one, continue in the pattern, purl one, and then we are going to lift the first stitch off over that second stitch. Again, continue in the pattern knit one, and then we're just going to bind off loosely by slipping that stitch over. 
So you'll always end up with one stitch on the side until you get on the right side until you get to the end. So you should never have more than two stitches on the needle because we're just lifting that first stitch over the second needle. So we are just slowly dropping the stitches off as we go. It's important to try to maintain consistent tension in the bind off so you don't have some stitches looking tighter or looser than others. But um, I just try to keep it fairly loose and you're gonna continue until you have one stitch left. Can, and make sure you continue in the one by one rib pattern as you go. I'm nearing the end here of binding off for the bottom ribbing. I've got one stitch left. All right, so when you have one stitch left, all you're gonna wanna do is take your scissors and snip about, I don't know, a six inch tail or so, and then just gently pull the yarn through the stitch, and then we will go back later and weave in this end. So now you are done with the bottom ribbing, and now you can start to see the sweater really take shape. I just wanted to show you what the sweater is looking like now. So we've got our bottom ribbing done. We've got our sleeve stitches. And um, now we're going to work on the ribbing and the buttonholes um, and do the collar. All right, so I just wanted to take a moment to talk to you about what we are doing with the button band and the collar. So we need to take our long circular needle and pick up and knit stitches all along the right front. Um, we're gonna connect it and pick up stitches along the back and then pick up stitches along the left front. I am going to make buttonholes on the right side, the right front, so we will have four buttonholes that we are gonna make on the right side. Um, if you want the buttonholes on the left side, you can follow the same concept. And um, this is the right side because if I were to put this cardigan on, it would be on my right side. It is not as if you are looking at the cardigan. Um, so that's just a way to remember the left or right side. So what we need to do is place four stitch markers I have these removable stitch markers. You can use a piece of scrap yarn and just a small piece of scrap yarn and just use that to tie um, a piece of scrap yarn in the place that you need if you don't have these removable stitch markers. So I am gonna start by putting a stitch marker about halfway through this bottom ribbing, okay? And I am gonna put the stitch marker through the second stitch, not the first stitch. We are going to be picking up and knitting through here. So we want to put the stitch marker kind of one over. So I am just going to slip that stitch marker there in the center of the bottom ribbing. Now I'm gonna find, we're gonna do four buttonholes. So I'm gonna do the bottom one and then the one at the top of the v-neck and then we'll kind of measure evenly. So this first buttonhole at the top here should be in line with the bottom of the armhole and it should be right around where you made that last v-neck increase. So if we follow over, that's about right here. So I'm gonna place another stitch marker right there. And now I am going to kind of measure evenly in between. You can eyeball it, you can actually measure it, whatever you feel comfortable with doing. So that is about 11 inches. So the middle of, well, yeah, it's like 11, 11 inches or so. So the halfway point would be about 5.5 inches here. Um, 
I am honestly, I'm probably just going to kind of eyeball it. That's usually what I do. But if you want to measure it, feel free. I'm an eyeball kind of girl. I, um, and again, just kind of put it, make sure it's not in the end there. I kind of put it all together and step back and just make sure it looks right. That's what I do with pictures. My husband always uses like a tape measure and measures exactly and I always eyeball it and he walks in the room and he's like oh my gosh how did you hang that picture so fast it looks so good and I'm like Mom, I just eyeballed it all right so let's see how we're looking here looks pretty even to me and now you can take your tape measure after so that's four inches four inches four inches that's how you can kind of check it's an easier way to check so that's pretty even um, so once you have the spots marked where your buttonholes will be it's time to start picking up and knitting stitches so we are going to, you always start in this case, picking up stitches on the right side. So we're going to be p starting to pick up stitches and on the bottom right of the cardigan. So you're going to want to leave a little bit of a tail and you're going to start inserting the, by inserting the needle on, at the bottom and we're going to pick up a stitch. I'm going to zoom in here so you can see because a lot of people are intimidated by picking up and knitting stitches and it really isn't that bad. All right. The one thing to remember when you pick up and knit stitches is that you're essentially working through this like in between that that last stitch on the end and the stitch before it. So you want to work through two strands of yarn when you're picking up the work. Okay, we're not just picking up one strand on the outside. We're inserting the needle between two strands of yarn. And because we're doing a rib, um, it kind of gets a little bunchy at the bottom. So I like to kind of start, um, I like to kind of start way at the edge here. You're going to want to leave a little bit of a tail, insert the needle, and you just pull the stitch through and up. And that is picking up and knitting. Just picking up a stitch is inserting the needle. When you pick up a stitch and knit, you're pulling a stitch through. So we are going to pick up stitches. We are going to do um, four stitches for every five rows on this ribbing. So that goes like this. You just picked up two stitches right next to each other. So we're going to do a third one. One, two, three, we're gonna skip a stitch and then insert right here. So we have made four stitches, but we've gone across five rows. So that's what sometimes you'll see like a pattern say, three stitches for every four rows or two stitches for every three rows, whatever. That is what that means. So basically we have four stitches, but we have picked up across five rows. And when you're going, this is when you are going in the opposite direction of what you, what we've knitted. Okay. So we did one, two, three, four. And then I just keep going like this, insert your needle, make sure you're going through those two bars. That's one, two, into that next row, three, and then skip a row, so skip a little space there. And now we're gonna insert into the next one, four. So overall, we have made eight stitches now across 10 rows. So you are gonna continue in this fashion, 
picking up all of these stitches and just to just know right now you don't need to worry about the stitch markers for the buttonholes at this point we are going to knit um, three rows before we um, before we worry about we're gonna knit and well it's gonna be one two yeah maybe on the third row third or fourth row we'll come back and do the buttonhole I'm gonna see what it's looking like and we'll decide what row we're gonna do the the buttonholes on so just keep going with picking up and knitting stitches one two three skip a row four so I will see you once we hit the back so you go all the way up the front and once you get to the spot where you are at the first sleeve this is the that first sleeve that right sleeve we're gonna put insert the needle and pick up a stitch for every stitch at the top here because this is at the top we will be going in the same direction our work will be in the same direction as this stitch so that's when you want to pick up one stitch for every single stitch when we're working um, perpendicularly to the work we want to do four stitches for every five rows so I will see you at the top here once I get to this sleeve all right so I have picked up stitches all along that right front I am at the top now where that first sleeve is where the back is and where that other sleeve is so I'm gonna pick up one stitch for every stitch here since we are picking up stitches in the same direction now so I am just inserting the yarn in between those two stitches at the top and pulling um, pulling the yarn through and you can see what it's looking like so continue around picking up one stitch for every stitch at the top until you get to the other side the other well that would be the left front and then we're going to go back to knitting three stitches for every four rows all right I have finished picking up stitches along the right sleeve the back and the left sleeve and now we're going to just do the same thing and insert a stitch um, one stitch three stitches for every four rows the same way it can be a little tricky kind of at the beginning to figure out where to put your stitch I'm going to start right there there's no exact way um, so that's one two three skip a stitch four and you've got to make sure you account for the stitches that you've added um, one thing I did want to note a lot of people will say to me so how many stitches should I have picked up it's going to be different for everybody I never give a number um, unless it's over like a really short um, you know piece of of, of the sweater but um, basically everybody picks up stitches differently I'm giving you general directions how to do it we are gonna want to make sure we have an odd number of stitches picked up just so the first stitch and the last stitch at the bottom kind of match each other um, so just keep that in mind there's no like overall correct number everybody knits lengths differently too so you might have more rows than I do um, just wanted to keep that in mind so I will meet you here at the bottom once I have picked up and knitted all stitches to the bottom all the way to the bottom here all right so I have picked up and knitted all of my stitches it's a lot of stitches make sure you have an odd number of stitches because we want our first stitches and our last stitches to look the same we are going to slip one purl wise purl one and then do our knit one purl one all the way around to the end and then we're gonna purl one purl I'm sorry then we're gonna purl two so one thing to note is when you pick up and knit stitches they're on the needle backwards 
So just for this very first row, you have to insert your needle a little differently. Um, so we are just going to slip the stitch purlwise off, but normally you would go like this. We are going to go in the direction of the stitch like that to slip it off. And I'm gonna bring the yarn in front because now we're gonna purl and we need to purl this way so that our stitch is not twisted. Okay, so normally we would knit like this, right? But see how the stitch is facing this way? So in order for the stitch to not be twisted, we need to knit through that way. So purl, we have to bring our stitch through the back like this. Purl one, knit one. And this is just for this very first row. This is just making sure our stitches don't look twisted on that first row. So purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one. So you are going to continue all the way around to the end in this fashion. And I'll show you what to do when you are two stitches to the end. All right, I have four stitches left in my first one by one rib here for the collar and I'm purling. I'm going to knit and then the, on the last two stitches, we're going to purl one and then purl the last stitch so that when we turn it and start working the front, I'm trying to help you create a little bit of a neater edge along the bottom. We're simply going to slip one knit wise, knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. All right, so we are gonna do this again. And then when you get to the end, you're just going to um, knit two on the end of this row. Um, so we're going to continue on. I'll show you what to do once you get to the end again. So continue all the way around. I've just decided I think we're going to do the buttonhole opening once we get back here, once we do this row and come back on the wrong side. So I will meet you back here at the end of this one row. I'm nearing so. the end of this one by one row, one by one rib row, and um, just want to show you how we knit the last two stitches, and then when, when we turn and start the next row, that's when we purl, when we slip the first stitch purl wise, purl one, and continue the knit one, purl one. So basically we are just slipping the first stitch when we're on the beginning of the row. Um, and that just helps to give the ribbing a little bit of a neater edge, cleaner edge at the bottom. So follow this knit one, purl one, all the way to the last two stitches and then when we turn the work over we're gonna start working our buttonholes on the way back all right I'm nearing the end of this row and I am going to purl two at the end and then we're gonna turn our work and we are gonna work our buttonhole row now. All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to make a yarn over and then bind off one stitch right around our stitch markers to create a small hole for our buttons. So we're going to start by slipping that first stitch, knitting that stitch, and then we've got our stitch marker um, we've got our stitch marker right here. We're going to do this. We're going to purl one. Okay. So you're going to always want to end 
and then end on a purl stitch, yarn over, and then we're gonna bind off a knit stitch. So knit one, purl one, and then we're gonna bind off this stitch. So we created a stitch with the yarn over, okay? But then we needed to reduce a stitch because we added a stitch. And then our yarn over is what will create this hole, okay? So then you just keep working in the one by one rib. And we're gonna work up to the point where we see our ne next stitch marker ending um, after a purl stitch. So here comes the next stitch marker. Here's the knit stitch, here's a purl stitch. So I'm gonna work up to that purl stitch. Yarn over, knit one. That's the stitch we're gonna bind off, but we need to work the purl stitch. Bind that off. And then continue working to the next stitch marker. And we're gonna make our yarn over after a purl stitch. All right, so I'm coming up here. You can see my stitch marker is right here. So I am gonna yarn over after this purl stitch. Yarn over. And yarning over is just lifting the yarn over from front to back. And then you knit one, purl one, bind one stitch off. Okay? So we've made one, two, three buttonholes so far. We have one more to do. We're gonna keep working in the one by one rib till we get close to that next stitch marker. All right, you can see the stitch markers here. I'm going to work up until this purl stitch. Yarn over from front to back. Knit one, purl one, bind off. So we have made our four buttonholes. One, two, three, four. And now we're just gonna continue the one by one rib all the way to the end. You'll turn the work, slip one purl wise, purl one, and then you'll work the one by one rib all the way across. And I just wanna make sure, I'm gonna show you what it looks like to work those yarn overs that we created for the armhole. So continue working this row until you get to two stitches to the end and then you'll just knit two. I'm at the end of the buttonhole row here. And remember we just knit two at the end and now we're gonna turn the work and do our slip one purl wise, purl one, and then continue in the knit one, purl one rib. And then once I get close to those yarn overs, those buttonholes, I just wanna show you how to work those stitches and what that will look like. All right, so I continued the one by one rib. I am coming up to the first yarn over, the first button hole here. So I can, all I do is continue knitting one, purling one in the established pattern. So I just purled one. I'm gonna knit one, even though it looks a little funny, but you can tell here that it's a knit stitch from down here. And this is, this is just around that one stitch where we bound off. So we're simply going to knit it. And then we're gonna just purl that yarn over because we just knit one. Okay, and then now we're gonna just keep Knitting one, purling one. So you just continue that one by one rib. It just looks a little bit different because you have a yarn over and you have bound off a stitch. I'm coming up to the next one, 
purl one, knit one, purl one, and then continue knitting one, purling one. Okay, so now we have completed that next row after the buttonhole row. Now I just want you to knit two more rows as we have. So knit back and forth, and then I will see you back here after you have completed two more rows of this one by one rib in the established way that we've already done. Okay, so I have finished two more rows, and now we are on the right side of the work. We are going to bind off for that ribbing and the collar here. So we are going to bind off in the pattern. So we started by knitting two at the beginning of these rows. So we will do the same and knit two. And then we're just gonna slip that first stitch over that second stitch. And this is exactly how we bound off at the bottom but we're just doing this along this collar ribbing. And again, remember to just keep the bind off pretty consistent and a little looser. Um, and again, there are many ways to bind off. I'm just trying to keep it simple here. So figure out the best way to bind off for you, but I personally like binding off this way. So you're gonna just keep binding off all of the way to the end. And then when you get to that last stitch, you just snip the end and pull it through. So I will meet you back here when we're at the end of this row. I'm nearing the end of the bind off row. I'm gonna cut the tail so I can weave that in later. Pull the yarn through. And we have now finished the whole collar of the sweater. You can remove the stitch markers now. And we will work the armholes now. So we finished the whole sweater. Um, you can remove the stitch markers, and now we will work the arms of the sweater. I just wanted to take a second to show you what the sweater is looking like now. So we've got our collar on, and we've completed our buttonholes. Let's start the sleeves. All right, now it's time to work the sleeves. So it doesn't matter which sleeve you start with. I'm gonna start with the left sleeve. And first we're going to just simply remove the stitches that are on our waist yarn, the sleeve stitches on the waist yarn. We're gonna put those on our 16 inch, or nine millimeter, 16 inch knitting needle. And you can just simply pick the stitches back up by sliding them back on the needle. You can remove the waist yarn as you go, or you can kind of do it at the end. It doesn't matter, whatever works well for you. I usually just kind of put them all on the stitches, put them all on the needle, and then remove the waist yarn at the end. Now I'm just gonna continue knitting in the round. Those first couple stitches can be a little wonky. Um, we can go back and seam up any gaps in the armhole, but overall you're just going to knit in the round until you get to the desired length of your sleeve, minus about two inches for the sleeve cuff. Feel free to try the cardigan on. I had you do the collar first so that you can try the, um, the cardigan on with the collar 
and you can just see how it fits a little bit more. It'll just work a little bit better for you to figure out how long you want your sleeves. So there you go. And as you make your way around, um, like I said, it can be a little wonky. Those, stretch, those stitches can stretch out. You can go back and kind of pull the yarn from where you um, picked up those stitches and joined the yarn. But again, just know that you can go back and seam up any armhole gaps at the end. So just keep knitting. Okay, so I have knit the sleeve to the length um, that I wanted before the two inch cuff. For me, it's about 14 inches. I'll just show you. 14 inches from that underarm. And now we're gonna reduce the stitches um, around the sleeve for the cuff. And to do that, we are simply, I'm just gonna knit to the end of the round there. We are simply going to reduce one stitch every other st stitch. So we do that by knitting one, knitting two together. Knit one, knit two together. And the knit two together is simply putting your needle through two stitches at one time and yarning over and pulling through just like you would as you're just knitting as if it was one stitch, but you have two stitches on that needle. So we reduce a stitch every other stitch. So continue knitting one, knit two together. Now the trick is making sure you end up with an even number of stitches. So I recommend stopping about three stitches or so, four stitches or so before the end of the round to see how many stitches you have so you can figure out how many more you need to reduce or not to keep an even number of stitches. So I will see you back here until, um, I'm gonna continue across until I have four stitches left in the round. All right, so I am four stitches to the end here. I have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 23 stitches plus four left. So that would be 27 stitches. So I am just gonna reduce one more time. So that would be 24 stitches, 25, 26. Okay, so just reduce enough so that you have an even number because now we're just simply going to knit one, purl one for the cuff for six rounds and then we will bind off just like we did for the bottom hem and for our collar. So continue knitting in the round and the stitches will probably be a little tight on the 16 inch needle. You can move these to double pointed needle if you'd like. You can probably finish just fine on the 16 inch. Um, you might have to stretch it a little bit but I think it, it would work out just fine. So keep knitting one, purling one for six rounds. Now it's time to bind off. So at the beginning of the round, you can just now take off the stitch marker and you can just knit one, purl one, then move that first stitch over the stitch you just knit. And then you're just gonna continue in that knit one, purl one, but binding off as you go. I'm almost at the end of the bind off round here and when you're at the last stitch bind it off and then you can take your scissors and cut a little tail pull the stitch through and then we will weave this tail in at the end 
So now we're finished with our sleeve. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and complete the other sleeve the same exact way you completed the first sleeve so they mirror each other. And I will meet you back here and we will sew on buttons and finish the sweater off. All right, it is time to sew on buttons. And I'm just gonna take you through what to do for the buttons. Um, you're gonna want to lay your sweater down and kind of line up, make sure the sweater's lined up. I would suggest doing the bottom buttonhole first and then the top one and then the ones in between. It just helps to get things spaced out a little bit more easily. Um, you're gonna want to take a button and I have this cool tapestry needle that's pretty thin, but then it has this clear loop. It's probably pretty hard to see. It has this clear loop that allows you to string a larger, a thicker piece of yarn through. So I am going to cut, I don't know, about a 10 inch tail and I am going to weave my yarn through the end of this tapestry needle. Always easier said than done. It's not always the easiest thing to do. Um, and then, you know, I am no sewing whiz. That's for sure. There's lots of different ways to tie on buttons. I usually just kind of wing it, to be honest with you. Um, and I am going to kind of just line up my sweater at the bottom here. I'm going to pull the yarn up through the bottom, leave a tail, cause I'm gonna just tie a knot on the other side. I am going to go through one of my holes here. You might have two or four hole button. I am going to go across and through and then come down in another stitch making sure that tail is there on the other side. I'm gonna come up and grab this last buttonhole here and come down through over this side. All right, I'm gonna take off the tapestry needle and I'm simply going to just tie a basic knot here. Like I said, nothing fancy. Um, I might do one more and then I'm just going to snip the tail. You can weave it in if you want, whatever you want to do. And so there you go. You've got your button. So like I said, that's a one inch diameter button, which works well with this yarn and this size buttonhole. And then you're just gonna wanna repeat that um, for the other three buttons. Like I said, I would just move on to this top button next and then do the ones in between. Cause what can happen is sometimes you can get this all stretched out and then the top won't line up. So line up the top next, get that one settled, get that button on and then repeat it for the other two buttons. All right, so now I am done knitting the sweater and you're just going to want to weave in ends and seam up your armhole gaps. Um, sometimes we can get these gaps at the armholes. So I will show you how to seam that up. Um, you'll have a tail left over from where you started knitting the sleeve. So basically you can just use that tail if it's not long enough. Uh, you can use a separate piece of yarn, but basically we're just going to kind of weave through some of the corner stitches and, and pull them together a little bit. There's no exact science to this. I am not necessarily the most strategic about this or the most organized about this, but I'm just going to pick up some of those stitches around the edge and just kind of pull the work together, um, not too tight. I'm actually going to weave in and go through to the other side too and pick up some of the stitches around the edge of this hole 
and just kind of try to seam it together a little bit. And then I'm just going to kind of like go pull through a stitch and tie a little bit of a knot through and I lost it. So I'm just going to do it with my hand here and just kind of pull it through. And you can see now that I've seamed up the armhole gaps a little bit. So you're going to want to weave in the ends at the sleeve and, um, you know, the ends where you had the collar um, and just follow along. You're just going to want to weave in the ends using your tapestry needle and kind of weaving yarn in around the stitches that are already there. So I really hope you've enjoyed the tutorial. I love the sweater. I hope you do too. It's super cozy. It's a pretty quick knit and it's just such a classic look. So I hope you enjoyed it. Enjoy your sweater.